Hello and welcome back to another episode of WWBTD Radio. This is the third episode of our mini series, More Than a Para, and we have some special guests with us today. I'd like to introduce Ashley Sullivan. We have Mike Friednash, and you should know Ashley Mosley at this point. Um, she is also going to be with us today. Um, so we're just going to dive into some of their experiences and their journey as a paraprofessional. Um, I will mention that we are all members of the Wonderful Behavior Barriers team as well. So to start us off, before we get too serious, um, we want to start with an icebreaker. So Ashley Sullivan, what is your spirit animal? That's a good question, Kate. Um, I think in the moment, my spirit animal would be a sea turtle. Um, I feel like I'm kind of just going with the flow of what's happening in society, and I'm taking it all in, and I'm just learning and growing from it. And yeah. it's getting me from one place to the next. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, Mike Friednash, what about you? I think I was going to say sloth but uh, realistically, we have to earn a living. So I would say it would probably be a horse. Uh, I love to be outside running if I can, and just, just exploring new places. Wow, practical. Um, I will, I have to say a flying squirrel. <clears throat> I just feel like <laughs> in my heart, it's, it makes me so excited when I see them and it's so surprising. It's just like, I want to do that. I don't need to fly constantly, but I would like to glide from here to there. Um, Ashley, what about you? I am going to bend the rules and I, my spirit animal is going to be a unicorn because uh, I don't really know. <laughs> I'm, I could do that. <laughs> I don't really know what a unicorn does. But I know they do some magic. Mm. And so for me, I feel like, especially in this time, we need to make some magic happen. I love it. I'm going to be a unicorn. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. I'm sure there's some glitter involved as well. I think so. And rainbow and sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So um, Mike Friednash, how did you decide to become a paraprofessional? It is a really kind of a career change, but a continuance of the work that I've been doing. I spent a number of years working on a traumatic brain injury unit. I was a job coach uh, for people with developmental disabilities, and I really enjoyed making a difference. Um, and yet, growing up, growing up in the Denver public schools, there weren't a whole lot of people that were working with kids that have some challenges. There were a lot of teachers that really needed some guidance. So I found out about it and decided, let's just explore this and see where it takes us, a place where I could use all my skills. That's awesome. That's awesome. I look forward to hearing this, what those skills are later in this episode. Absolutely. And, um, Ashley, what about you? What did you, Ashley Sullivan, that is, uh, how did you decide to become a paraprofessional? Um, I got into being a paraprofessional right after um, I had graduated some of college, I didn't graduate all of college <laughs> at this moment. Um, but I was looking for what I wanted to do and I knew I loved working with kids. Um, I didn't know I was gonna love working with kids with disabilities um, until I got into it. And that's just kind of where it all started for me. Yeah, cool, cool. So when we're looking back at your earliest days as a para, um, I know in some of our previous conversations, you know, typically no one really gets training. So thinking back, what were your greatest challenges um, in those early days as a para? And, and also, um, what were your greatest triumphs? So um, Mike, would you like to start us off? Sure. Um, as you said, there's not a whole lot of training. <laughs> so it was literally on the job training. Uh, I think learning very quickly about how, what I need to do to do this job and then finding out what, beside the main teacher that I had worked with, uh, you know, what else is going on here? Who are the people, who are the other teachers that I'm going to be interacting with and really making it up as I go, literally. Even when I talked to people that were already paraprofessionals and had been at the school for a long time. They, they wouldn't be able, they couldn't tell me anything. They just said, you know, give me some clues. And they went, now you just have to figure it out yourself. 
Just do it. It's a real problem. <laughs> right. Thank you. Close. <laughs> Did you have a similar experience, Ashley Sullivan? Sure. Yeah, I, I would agree with Mike. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of training when we first got into it. Um, it was kind of a follow my lead with my teacher. Um, she was really awesome at modeling how to work with students with challenging and dis challenging behaviors and disabilities. Um, and so I really just held on to that. Um, I was very lucky with my teacher who kind of let me explore and lead in the ways that I wanted to lead, um, which also was kind of challenging because I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, yeah. Would you say that you could, you could tell that you really recognize your strengths in that, like letting you lead? That's kind of, that's pretty cool giving you that extra responsibility. Yeah. Um, my, I mean, finding strengths that I didn't know I had, um, in, in those situations was also interesting as well. Ah, that's so cool. That's awesome. Kate, if I could throw in something real quick. The teacher that I interviewed with on the day that I interviewed said, hey, this guy's great. I'm ready to hand him my keys. Probably the, that was the biggest moment of my whole entire time with that teacher. Beyond the second day of my showing up at school, the, the guy was checked out. I mean, literally checked out. And that was his style for the rest of the school year. So uh, huh. it was definitely a way of learning as you go. So are you saying that you basically had to run the classroom? Is that what I'm hearing? Very much so. Hmm. Okay. Are there <laughs> any fears, Mike? Like when you are going, and Ash, when you're going into this position, you don't really have any um, training. Is there any, was there ever any fear because you're dealing with people's kids? Yeah, I, I would say for sure. Um, I had never encountered um, or had the opportunity to build relationships with students who were nonverbal. Um, and so that scared me because I didn't know if I was doing it right. I didn't know if I was doing anything good for them. Um, and wanting to make a difference in somebody's life and not knowing if you're doing it correctly was some, was a big fear that I had. I would I would agree with you there. Um, I was put into an A and N situation, and given no information about the kids, no information at all. You know what are their strengths? What do they like? It's pretty much learn as you go, and that was that was the challenge. I learned real quick that you had to build these relationships with the kids, and so that's what I did. Well, it's crazy to me too that you're giving such little information because you know, yeah. especially because we're traveling support, right? We go into classrooms, the kids have never seen us before. Typically, if I remember to ask, I you know, I ask the teacher, I'm like, is there anything I need to know that's triggering for these kids? Because you know, everyone's different, and so you know, a pat on the back could be comforting to one kid, and another kid, you know, he could have a history of trauma, and you could get socked in the face. I mean, let's be real. So it's really just, it's kind of sounds irresponsible, dare I say, uh, that we're not given more information about these kids when we go into work with them full time. Um, but I'm glad that you mentioned, Mike, that, you know, you recognize the, how meaningful relationships were and yeah, you were able to build those kind of early on, it sounds like. So. Absolutely. Thank you. I think you learn to listen. You learn to be very creative. And again, ask lots of questions. Um, I was given a, a student to watch. Uh, they said, keep him with an eyesight. That's it. There you go. And so naturally, I tried to dig deeper. And I said, well, I need a little more information. And I was actually told, you are on, are on a need-to-know basis, and you don't need to know. And I thought to myself, what are you guys doing? You know, obviously, if this kid is with, I have to have him with an eyesight distance. I'm sorry, I can't watch this kid if I don't know what I'm looking for. And after a lot of pushing and a lot of pushing, I get just tiny bits of information. But, you know, building that relationship, but asking lots of questions is, is so key. Yeah, that's really interesting. 
you mentioned um, you had to be creative. Um, do you, can you be specific and um, like, what were those ways that you had to, had to get creative besides just asking questions? Beside asking questions, um, what I learned to do, I have an art background, so I love to draw. Um, so at times if I see a kid, I'll, maybe I'll pull them over next to me and say, hey, check this out. Have you ever seen this? And I'll draw a three-dimensional cube. And I'd say, can you do this? And I'd teach him how to do that. And so that was one, and he loved it. That was one idea. Another kid that I worked with had a brain injury and had a very short fuse. And because of my experience working with brain injuries, I was able to tap into what this kid really secretly liked, which was, which was basketball. And because of his brain injury, he couldn't remember a whole lot of facts. So I learned very quickly to try to figure out, okay, this kid likes basketball. So in a history class, I said, well, all right, it's, the year is 1823, this event happened. And he couldn't remember all the details. But what I was able to do is tie in key numbers to certain basketball players, such as 23 was Michael Jordan. And so I'd say, imagine Michael Jordan in France, and then, and then this event happened. And he was able to pick that piece up. And he ran with it. And he ended up acing the exam. And obviously, the teacher had you know, cut it back a fair amount. But because of what I was able to teach him or give him a new way of thinking, uh, I was able to use my creativity and he did well. That's an awesome story, Mike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's that so cool. cool. <laughs> Ashley, what about, um, Ashley Sullivan, what about you? Was there any ways or thinking back, any like particularly interesting or creative ways you were able to work with some of these kids? Sure. Um, I worked with a lot of kids who were nonverbal, and so we had to um, be very creative in how we tapped into their creativity mm -hmm. um, and also just create, being creative in how we helped them learn. Um, for an example, we had one student who he just loved to run down hallways. You know, he didn't want to go anywhere. He just wanted to go run, mm -hmm. um, which was fine, but we wanted him to tell us that we want that that's what he wanted to do um and so what we ended up doing for him um was just creating like a little a little run sign on the door and we taught him just to grab the sign and bring it to us and then we would go with him <laughs> so oh, he wouldn't yeah. take off without an adult um but it, it accessed that communication piece for him as well as helped us learn how to communicate with him in a way that we could all understand what the need was. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's kind of like a twofer, right? <laughs> that's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, so Mike, you, uh, you mentioned, you know, that you kind of were, had an understanding of what skills you could bring to the table when you, you know, decided to become a para. Um, so I was wondering, did you discover any new ones when you um, when you started working that you didn't know you had, kind of like what Ashley was mentioning before? Every day is a new learning experience. Uh, you learn to pull together things that you never thought you would use before. Some unknown fact out of nowhere can connect a kid, uh, whether that has to do with, you see, you see him wearing a jersey of a certain team and so you play off of that. Um, there's, there's just so much. It's hard to say one little thing, but really just letting him see that that's just not some old bald guy. He's actually really trying to be a friend or trying to help you out and, and help them understand, hey, there is a pathway through this. Let's, let's learn some tricks that you can use based on your abilities to move forward and build those connections with your teachers so they can trust you, trust me, and trust the staff. Um, a lot of these kids just missing so much in their world, whether that's food, lack of sleep, there's so many things that all of everybody on this team has seen. Uh, just learning to let them be human and build that relationship is the biggest skill that I learned from this all. Yeah. About, yeah, no, it totally does. Um, actually, what, was there anything, what, 
what did what skills did you discover about yourself that you didn't know that you had? Um, I didn't know I could run. <laughs> ah, <laughs> run fast. <laughs> uh, which actually did become a passion of mine. Um, I, I did start running um, when I became a paraprofessional, not because I was chasing kids, but I didn't know I liked to run after that. That was something I liked that I learned. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I feel like, again, I agree with Mike, every day was something new. Um, I learned a lot of patience that I didn't know I had either. Um, I, I learned a lot about myself, I think, just as much as the students learned as well. Um, and being able to have skills in building relationships and um, working with students with disabilities and students who are nonverbal, that all came with the job. Um, but it wasn't necessarily something I went in with. And yeah, it, it just was something new every day. There's just too many things to name. <laughs> and to add on to that, if you don't mind, I think one of the skills I learned is that even though I was a para, which isn't exactly high on the ladder, your role is just as important as the teacher, as the principal, because they trust you the most. Mm -hmm. You have the most connection with them. You are the one who spends most time with them. And you also carry a lot of information. Hey, this kid last class did this, or he mentioned this. And that communication was very, very important to carry on to from one person to another. Patience is a big one. I, I cannot tell you uh, how much that is important. But one more is you learn to be an advocate for the kids. Mm -hmm. If I, I had a teacher in my first year who had literally checked out. Um, the lights were on, but nobody was home. And he really was very disconnected, just kind of, was out there. And so I learned I had to go to see principals. I had to go see social workers. I had to do the, all the all the footwork. And that taught me a lot. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I love that you both brought up was um, the humanity. Like, as you said, I learned a lot about them, but I also learned a lot about myself in the process. And um, Mike, you said, just let them be human. And like, in my experience, just working with um, kids of all different demographics is they are human just like I am. And so if I know that I'm walking in this world imperfect, I know that they, ha I need to give them the room to make mistakes as well, because I give myself the room to make mistakes. So I love that you guys, and I'm not saying mistakes, but I give my, I give them the room to be themselves because I need the room to be Ashley. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that you guys said that because I feel like that's key understanding that these are humans right just like we are and we're all growing right always, always. i'm gonna be 90 years old still learning stuff about me so <laughs> i cannot expect for them to have it all together that's unfair <laughs> and and showing them that even grown-ups make mistakes right. that right. we don't always do what's right we don't always think make the right decisions she's right. showing them hey i may be an older guy missing a lot of hair up on top <laughs> but <laughs> even i make mistakes and right. i admit it and right. getting the teachers to be able to see that and kind of present a new way of doing things showing hey teachers you can tell these kids you make mistakes too mm -hmm. and and for some of the kids that's what they need to see because they see teachers and they see people in upper uh in the upper levels of school as no mistakes right you're right you're human and i love what you said it was beautiful yeah, I see. <laughs> it's true <laughs> it's true and we are actually just about out of time um i wanted to thank uh ashley sullivan and mike friedbash for being with us today and sharing some of your stories um ashley mosley thank you as always for being with us um 
So we will, we are going to have our next episode with um, two additional guests of our behavior team. Um, it's really been awesome today just seeing all three of your lovely faces because we are experimenting with grid view. Hope everyone yeah. likes it. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you all again. Really good conversation. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Kate. Bye. Thank you. Good to see you. <laughs>